Welcome! In this video we are going to create this pine wood texture in SVG. The main feature of this texture are the longitudinal wood grains. We'll be focusing on generating these grains to mimic the quality of the material. Let's get coding. I have here my development environment. The left panel is the code editor and on the right panel is the preview for the SVG. Let's start by adding the SVG tag as the root and also specify the mandatory XML namespace. Then we'll add a rectangle that's full width and height. Our image turned black because the default fill color is black. Next we are gonna add a filter which we will apply on our rectangle. Note that we defined an ID for the filter so that we could later reference it in the rectangle. Our image turned blank because the filter is empty. Now let's create some noise. First we're gonna add this peculiar filter effect called FE Turbulence. The turbulence filter effect is special in the sense that it doesn't require any input image. It just produces a turbulent noise. Though we have to specify the base frequency attribute to have it generate something. Let's set this to 0.014 now. What's generated is called Perlin noise, which is heavily used in computer graphics for creating organic textures. And that's exactly what we are going to do as well. Let's examine the features of the noise first. We see it's quite vibrant and seems roughly uniform along both axes of the plane. It also seems as if we are seeing multiple layers of noise intertwined. Let's add a color matrix filter effect so we can manipulate the noise. The color matrix filter effect works with a 4x5 matrix and an input image which is by default the result of the previous filter effect. Each input pixel is multiplied by the matrix to calculate the output pixels. The four rows correspond to the four channels on the output R, G, B and A. Similarly, the first four columns correspond to the input channels R, G, B, A. And there's a fifth column which is for constant offset. Let's see this in action. First, we're gonna make sure that there's no transparency on our image. This means that each pixel must have an alpha value of 1. The alpha channel is calculated based on the fourth row and we need a constant, so we go to the fifth column. Now that the last value of the matrix is set to 1, our filter produces a solid black fill. This is because all output pixels have an alpha of 1, but 0 on the color channels. Next, we're gonna examine the layers of the turbulence. These layers come from the individual noise patterns found on each channel. So if we want to see the noise on the red channel, we need to modify the first column. The first row determines how the output on the red channel is calculated. So it makes sense to apply the modification here. Thus, we'll set the first value of the matrix to one because multiplying the red input by one produces the same value on the output. Now we see the red channel of the turbulence isolated. We could isolate the green or blue channels as well by moving this one to the second or third columns respectively. If we put this one in the fourth column of the first row, the variance of the alpha channel will be rendered on the red output. This render result feels much more organic than the one we had previously, so let's work with this. If we add ones in the fourth column of the second and third rows as well, the variance of the alpha channel will be rendered on all three color channels. Now we have a grayscale gradient noise, which shares some characteristics with its cousins, the linear and radial gradients. In all three of them, colors transition from one to another along a path. In a linear gradient, this path is straight. In a radial gradient, well, it's radial. And in the gradient noise, there are multiple paths that are more or less random. Right now, in our image, black is transitioning to white, but we can make it more colorful 
For example, make blue transition to red. As a first step, let's clear the ones in the fourth column. Now we can use a constant offset to set our starting color, blue. Blue output means third row, constant input means fifth column. The color matrix operates in the linearized RGB space, where maximum color intensity is denoted by 1 and minimum color intensity is denoted by 0. Thus, we are not setting this value to 255 like we would in CSS, but we are only putting 1 here. Now let's transition to red. We're gonna use the variance of the alpha channel as the input. Red output means first row, alpha input means fourth column. We put one here as well, so we just transfer the noise of the alpha channel to the red without changing its magnitude. We now realize that we missed our mark by making blue transition to purple. What's happening is that we are adding a variable amount of red to blue. However, what we want is to have red where we see maximum intensity purple. How can we achieve this? We need to decrease the blue value along the increase of the red value. Let's move to the third row of the fourth column. In this row, we already have a constant offset. We can reduce its effect by subtracting from it. If we put minus one here, the constant blue will be negated where the alpha input is at maximum. Now that we learned the basics of colorizing with the color matrix, let's try to use the tones of wood instead. We're gonna need two colors that resemble wood. If you want, you can pick your own two colors through one of the following ways. Search for wood color palette on the internet, or perform an image search for wood and use the eyedropper tool, or take a photo of an actual piece of wood, then use the eyedropper tool to extract two colors. Most likely, you'll end up having two colors in hexadecimal format. I'll just paste here in comments which colors I will be working with. Another thing about the linearized RGB color space is that it's somewhat complex to convert into. Most of the times we have to use an exponential function on the hex value to get the linearized representation. To speed up this process, I created an easy to use online tool, which we are gonna go to. You can check it out following the second link in the description. So we got three floats, which are the R, G and B components. We don't need a high level of precision, so let's try going with two decimals. We put the components in the constant offset column. This gives us a solid fill with the color. Now we have to convert our other color and put it in the matrix as well. Once again, we are gonna use the fourth column for the end color. The constant offset already affects every pixel even if the alpha input is zero. So we have to subtract the offsets from these color values. Only this way will our gradient noise transition from our first color to our second. In terms of hue, we are at the right place with the texture. We still have to work on the form though. The visual characteristics of a wood plank is mainly defined by the wood grain, the fibers running on the face. We need to mimic these grains for a better result. The base frequency attribute of the turbulence filter effect can optionally be supplied with two values. These values individually control the noise frequency on the two axes of the plane, X and Y. Making one smaller than the other creates an elongated effect. Let's try some value pairs on the frequency.
Depending on which orientation you would prefer, you can either go for a smaller X and greater Y frequency, or a greater X and smaller Y frequency. I'm gonna go with the 0.1 and 0.01 value pair for a vertical alignment. Our texture looks pretty good at this stage, but to me it feels like there's a bit too much contrast on the grains. This is because the default type is used in the turbulence filter effect. However, we can change this by setting the type attribute to fractal noise. This caused a slight change in the result, but I prefer this version. The default type is named turbulence and it has some abrupt jumps within, while the fractal noise type is more balanced having smoother transitions. And we are finished with building our texture. This is how it will look like. You could have a different result if you followed along, but use different colors, frequencies or noise type. Before we wrap up, I would like to show you how to create variants of the texture. This should come handy if you are creating something like a flooring with neighboring planks. In such case, using the same variant for all the planks would make it easy for the human eye to recognize repetition. Luckily, with the help of the seed attribute of the FE turbulence, we can easily generate millions of different noise patterns, creating different variants. All we need to do is just pick a number between 1 and 16 million and set it as the seed. So in case of the flooring example, you could just generate a random number for each plank and set it as the seat to achieve a more realistic outcome. For sake of minimalism, I'm gonna remove the seat attribute and I'm gonna clean up the comments at the bottom as well. Finally, I'll show you how our code can be minified. I have SVGO already installed on my machine. It is a Node.js tool for optimizing SVG files. I just have to pass the file name as the first argument and by default it will overwrite the file with the minified version. And it prints the size of the minified code, which is 256 bytes. So this is how you create a simple pine wood texture that's exactly a quarter of a kilobyte in size. You can check out the code following the code pen link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you next time.